Hi, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under, and I've got uh, my friend Margot on the other end, and we're just going to talk about how the Arctic looks uh, at the end of the uh, the melt season, when it should should be refreezing, but doesn't seem to be. So, uh, Margot, uh, take it away. What do you what do you see here? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it's it's amazing that I can't believe we're already at the end of September and, you know, we didn't have the blue ocean event, they said, but we're having the effects of one. And, um, you know, they said that the minimum was reached around, what, September the 15th and that there's a little bit of refreeze coming back. But I'm seeing um, north of the North Pole, it's still really really disintegrating and breaking up and um, you know it's coming back just a little skim of ice over in the Beaufort Sea so that that tail is connecting up with um, with the main part of the ice and I also see the um, the thickest part it's still moving and shifting and kind of settling in for the winter because it doesn't really have anywhere to anchor to. Well, let's just have a look uh, because that yeah. uh, this next one sort of uh, shows uh, where the where the thickest sort of ice is. And right. That's, and that's how it looks today. Yeah. <clears throat> so well, that's not actual, exactly... Uh, that's not it's a, actually a little bit more to the right of that picture. Yeah, but yeah right. that's... That's the tail end of it that's that's coming off of the thickest ice that's that's mixing down into the Beaufort Sea. So it's still moving. It's and it's it's still migrating and morphing and you know, it's it's a work in progress here. Well, shall we just go through some of the the very sort of basic things that we, you and I sure. measure and we'll just yeah. and we'll just see what we can see. So Okay, um, great. This is this this is the sea ice concentration. This is the latest that I've got, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, well, the first thing that I see is a huge hole in the Beaufort Sea, and then uh, I well, don't see I don't see any signs of refreeze <laughs> there. Well, it's refreezing back around the hole. There had been a tail, and then you see the piece, uh, the the white area. That's, and then the black area in between, it's refreezing there yeah, in, yeah. in between those two. So that's, it's like the tail is connecting with it, with this main part that's coming out. Can you see my pointer or not? Probably Sorry. not. Uh, we're no, no there's screen. no pointer there. Okay. But anyway. That's okay. Yeah, so I'll go on to and, the next. And it's coming back a little bit around the edges and in the tributaries, it's just very slightly starting to refreeze in the, yeah, the tributaries right. there. So it's going to take a while for it to go out much further because the sea ice is so, I mean, the the sea surface is so warm. It's going to take time for that sea surface temperature to c calm down for yeah. it to refreeze at all. <laughs> I, I really quite like this. Uh, sea ice concentration map because it just shows the huge area where where there's no ice mm -hmm. at all. You know, all that area between mm -hmm. eastern Siberia and where and where the ice is. I mean, it's a huge area. Yeah. We're not used to seeing that. It's no. a different pattern. It's a different pattern this year. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So let's go on. So this uh, shows just, I, I just want to get an idea of kind of what the temperatures are. And these are air temperatures. Um, mm -hmm. So it, what does it show? You know, I mean, it's below zero. Uh, right. It, you've, got it this, a you've got this area air. here, which is, uh, I don't know what temperature that is. That's higher temperature. Yeah, that's uh, a little above freezing. Yeah, yeah. It's but, in the green. So, 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 and of course, that's what they refer to as the, you know, what's happening in but the air. But we have that warm air it's swooping down there with the, you'll see with the two meter temperature anomaly, it's, it's swooping down across. So. Yeah. So this is what the, the, uh, the Danish or the Norwegian uh, forecast for the North Pole, minus four degrees 
um, mm -hmm. which um, that's not very cold. That's is not it? very very cold. I mean, you know, you I'd expect it to be at least minus ten. You know, I mean, the sun is set. Yeah. I'd say. And mm -hmm. then in that um, part, the sun is set. So this is a different version. It is it gives a diff slightly different temperature, minus seven point two. Right. Uh, but that's not exactly overwhelming either, is it? No. So uh, now to look at this. I mean, these are the. I know. These are the temperature anomalies. Right. It's absolutely incredible. You know, just. And I think this is from today. So I think the Arctic is up what three point four C higher than normal. Right. That's what I saw. And Sam Caran is forecasting it going up. Um, what four point to four point three C higher yeah. than normal or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. So here we are. These are the sea surface temperatures. Uh, mm -hmm. So I can't actually see what that what that color means, but it's not. You it's, know, it's, it's above, above zero. Isn't it? uh, it's a yeah. little. It's a little bit above freezing, I think. Yeah. Right and around of course, the that's, the, that's yeah. the sea surface. Uh, the sea surface. Right. So we'll we'll get right. to that in, in a few minutes, won't we? Uh, right. Yeah. And uh, this is another uh, thing. I just got this from Earth Knoll School. Uh, right. Minus one point eight degrees at the North Pole. Right. So that's and barely cold enough to even freeze anything. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, the temperature. I mean, the usual figures, minus, uh, what, minus 1.8 to even start freezing again? Is that, would that be right? Well, I can't for, when, it, when it's got the salt water in it, yeah, it's, yeah, about, yeah. it's about that, or, yeah. you know, 2C, it's around 2C, minus 2C, yeah. that it starts refreezing, depending yeah. on how much salt is in it. Yeah. So these are the sea surface temperature Anomalies. I think. Yeah. I can't. I, I can't see what's on the, the, the top right-hand corner because. Uh, oh, the I, um, the pink that that pink color, that light pink color along that Siberian coastline, that's six C higher than normal. Yeah, yeah. That's the highest. Yeah. So. And it's, then, like the so red is five C. Yeah. All so that. between sort of oh. about two to six degrees warmer than normal, isn't it? Right. Right. All around the sea ice, it's like that. And that's one reason we have methane coming up in the Barents Sea and the Kara yeah. Sea because, you know, get, there's, I'll, there's I'll no get, ice I'll, there. I'll get to the methane because that's a whole different story. Oh, okay. So uh, <coughs> I'm most concerned at the moment with the, the uh, process of Atlantification. Right. And this was put together by someone who... Uh, did all the, the wave heights and meters uh, mm -hmm. on Earth Knoll School, and uh, some of them, are, it's pretty amazing. I mean, I, you know, it's hard to see how ice can form when you've got, you know, um, uh, you know, when you've got waves that are 2.4 or 4 meters or 1 meter in height. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, that, and I think that's, you know, the, the actual air temperatures are only one metric, you know, uh, we've got all these right. other aspects as well. So this is just another right. one, uh, just mm -hmm. showing, I think it's, it must be a different time of the day. I'm not, I'm really not sure. Yeah. So this whole thing, oh yeah, well let's, uh, and then the, this is the other measurement. Uh, it's the one with the concentration that I always take, the yeah. sea ice thickness. Uh, right. It's pretty thin, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's it's most of it's in the purple, and then that one part that I, in quadrant four I've named them in quadrants. That's where the thickest sea ice yeah is um, concentrated and left over. And I was looking back at um, the last couple of years, and this is a totally different pattern. Last couple of years, the thickest sea ice was right around the coastlines, yes. but this year it pulled away from the coastlines, and now it's kind of moving as a mass, and it's it's um, 
Like yeah, I so, said, it's trying to anchor on to that Canadian archipelago. Yeah, that, yeah. That's it. Well, there's just two, two basic, two it, islands there. Yeah, it doesn't have much to hang on to, does no, it? No, no. And it hasn't changed that much since when, you know, I was looking at this a few few weeks ago. Basically, how it looked then is how it looks now. It's no. um, yeah, it was more egg shaped, and it's it's flattening out um, more more like a rectangle and getting getting thinner up and down and getting wider right and left kind of yeah, yeah. so but it's still pretty uh, pretty thin at the pole and it is still uh, migrating down towards the Beaufort Sea slowly when you go yeah. through the animation if you click through it slowly I can which uh, I, I do I can I can do that I can do, uh, I think I've got it then, here. Um, so I'll just uh, it's um uh, you can actually see it still moving. Yeah. Unfortunately, I haven't got the um, the dates on here because I like to you know yeah, the you picture like as big see, as yeah. possible. Yeah. <clears throat> so, but that gives that's over thirty days, so that's how it's right. changed in the, right. in, in that yeah, time. Yeah, it moved. Fr see, it moved from the egg shape out to the rectangle. Yeah, 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 and yeah. It's of, being being stretched, a lot of that being is, stretched out. A lot of that is from the wave action. Yeah, and the way that the the winds have blown it to the way the storms have moved everything around. Yeah. Okay, I'll go back to our um, uh, okay. thing. Our, uh, Okay, so that's so that's the sea ice thickness uh, from the uh, U.S. Navy site. Now this appeared um, just a couple of days ago. Oops, in the uh, in the Washington Post, I sent it to you. The mixing of planets, ocean waters, right. is slowing down, speeding up global warming uh, study finds. So uh, just wondering, kind of, what you've made of this. This, I think this is the paper that relates it, re, it relates to um, sea seawater generally forms stratified layers with lighter waters near the surface and denser waters at greater depth. The stable configuration acts as a barrier to water mixing that impacts the efficiency of vertical exchanges of heat, carbon, oxygen, and other constituents. Previous quantification of stratification change has been uh, limited to uh, a simple differencing of surface and 200 meter depth change and has neglected the spatial complexity of ocean density change, etc. etc. It's a little bit too, um, <laughs> yeah, it gets pretty technical. Yeah, it's pretty technical, yeah. But basically, they're saying that um, the salinity is. You know, the ocean is changing up in the Arctic because of the way the Atlantic is mixing in and the Pacific is mixing in. And as it becomes more saline or salty, then, you know, it changes the, the way every, the whole ecosystem and, yeah. and the way it moves. And in one part of the article, it talks about the AMOC slowing down yeah which right the which is big trouble for mm. the rest of the planet it affects all of the climate all over the world yeah yeah and we, we also have problems because of the uh, ice sheets melting off of greenland and that's that's adding cooler water and also it's it's fresh water it's not salt water and so it's it's changing the ecosystem too. Yeah. So I presume that I, mm -hmm. I think I even read something about this that you know the uh, the glaciers are melting and they're they're coming off into the sea and of course that will be cooling down the area mm -hmm. around Greenland, will it not? Right, right, yeah. And you can actually see that on when when it's not cloudy, you can see it on NASA Worldview where yeah. it's just pouring out. Yes, it's very hard to find. I mean, I don't think it's been cloudless at the at the pole for weeks and weeks. You know, you just have to kind of oh, find no. those 
you just have to find these little areas where you can see through the cloud or there's a little gap yeah. or something. And there were a few days a couple of weeks ago where there was some good viewing, but recently it's been real cloudy. And it wasn't it wasn't that bad in the last two years that we've been watching it. I mean, it's sort of I don't think you know it's been pretty cloudy up there, but nothing nothing like what we've seen this year. Well, I think it's it's because of the warmer temperatures and also also the smoke from the fires. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, all of that covered uh, things up too. And of course, the more warming, as they say, you know, the more the more water vapor you get. So right, be... and they've had a lot of rain up there too. So yeah, yeah. Lots of lots of water coming down. Anyway, this is another um, paper that I haven't really had a chance to look at: reduced efficiency of the Barents C cooling machine. So the Barents C is where we're we're seeing mm -hmm. huge changes. Right. So dense water that masses, yeah. yeah, dense water masses from the Barents Sea are an important part of the Arctic thermohaline system. Here, using hydrographic observations from 1971 to 2018, we show that the Barents Sea climate system <coughs> has reached a point where the Barents Sea cooling machine, warmer Atlantic inflow, less sea ice, more regional ocean heat loss, has changed towards less efficient cooling. So, and then there was one other um, yeah, weakening of the cold halocline layer exposes uh, whatever that word, uh, oceanic heat in the east, eastern Arctic Ocean. Mm -hmm. So, and well, it's pretty technical, so I don't think I'll read it. Um, but it's, it's just a, yet another paper that confirms what we well, already know. Basically, the bottom line on this one is they're talking about the reduced sea ice cover, um, allowing the mixing to happen, and then there's no albedo. And um, so it's it just stays warm all the time. And so it just keeps heating up. And yeah, yeah. Cool down, basically. Which is what you and I have been saying for some time, really. Right, it? right. And the the ice did not come back in the Barents Sea last winter. It did not. It came back in the Kara Sea on the east of Novaya Zemlya, but on the west side, it didn't come back at all. Yeah, yeah, so that yeah. Sea has been ice free completely this whole last year. Oh, wow. Well, that's, that's huge, isn't it? So, you know, so uh, that's why Svalts, interesting uh, Svalts, Svalbard, etc. Mm -hmm. Well, Svalbard is getting nice. It gets ice around it, yeah. but it's getting less. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's, now we come to the, the big question huh, of that uh, methane. Now, I'm particularly interested in hearing from you about this. I've just chosen this because I just had it on my records. That's going way back to a month ago. And this yeah. huge outpouring of, uh, of, of methane from um, near uh, Severnaya Zemlya and then sort of going up to the pole. And then we've, we've seen huge areas, you know, uh, and this is another, another day. And that, that, that's fairly typical, isn't it, Margot? Well, it's been spewing up there since January. Remember when CAMS went down for 10 days in January this yeah, year? Yeah, yeah. And then when they came back up, that was there. And it wasn't there before then. It was, it was spewing up further south. But, yeah. now, but now it's been spewing up there ever since January. And... I think it's we have um, a methane crater that's opened up in the sea floor. Um, you saw that article, yes, or the yes. paper about that, yeah, right? That, and that was about, about the, the that was about the Barents Sea, Barents sea wasn't it? Yeah, but they have those craters all the way through, and yes. and so I think that that a rift is opened up in the sea floor and has you know it's just like continuously releasing because the red tectonic plate line that separates the North America 
plate with the Eurasia plate runs right up, right up next to there. And it's a place that has earthquakes pretty, pretty regularly. So I think that it makes sense that something could open up there from, from the plate shifting. Yeah. Well, I mean, certainly we're, we're seeing an uptick in levels of, of, of methane. So I'm just oh, yeah. really, um, well, I'm just so impressed that I think you seem to be the only one who's done this work. And if anyone else has done it, they're not really making it public. So, uh, yeah, well, and uh, it's a pretty incredible graph because it shows uh, here that that was that was the maximum level last year. Right. Uh, which October was, the 12th. That was on October the 12th. Yeah. And that was, I don't remember, what was it, 1885 or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Like that. So, so it's between 1880 and 1890 parts per billion. Yeah. yeah. And that, oh, now this has to be, We I, I think we probably need to re-explain this, that this is taken, the, these are global uh, levels, aren't they? And they're taken from an average of the METOP 1 and METOP 2 satellite right, data. Right, right, from NOAA, from yeah, NOAA. from the NOAA methane, yeah. And if you, this is just one level, it's the 477 slash 469 millibar reading. So it's about 500 millibars. So when you're looking at CAMS, it would relate to about the 500 millibar reading. Yeah, because what most people do is they just paint, you know, they post the latest data from Metop one or Metop two, and then they say, "Oh, this is a, this is a high level," but the you know, we, you, you, it's very hard to get the trends. Well, I'm glad I started doing this, and you know, once once I got into it, and then I started tracking it daily this year because it started zipping up in february and that was that was really too early to see it really going up so fast but yeah. so i track it daily now too and um then do the weekly reports but we're up past 1900 yeah because i can't quite see the that. figures clear enough to see at what point we exceeded that uh you know, that maximum level that looked as though it was back in oh god oh may, it may in, or something i think it was june june yeah um, yeah and we're already at 1900 parts per billion 1903 yeah so, 1903 is where we are yeah. right now or right about so that says a lot and we're and we're not at the end of the of the rise it usually methane goes up until about mid-October. That's from all of the heating from the summer in the northern hemisphere. And then it starts going down until yeah. December. Well, generally, it's not supposed to really start going back up until summertime. But, yeah. you know, we saw last year it started zipping up and or this year it started zipping up in February. Last year it started zipping up in March, and um, so it's um, it's really it's it's going crazy. Yeah, and I remember last winter you were reporting, um, you know, methane coming up through the ice in the, in the middle of winter, and then we found yeah. a paper by Natalia Shakova that. Um, that confirmed that that, right. you know, that observation. Right. She, she was saying that that was right. happening, wasn't she? Right. And, you know, it's not hard to see when you look at a couple of different models and put yeah. it together. You can see that it's it has to be coming up through the ice because there's nowhere else for it to be coming from. Yeah, yeah. So basically what we're seeing is it's not a, a blue ocean event as, as, as so many people are obsessed with you know it's either one thing or the other and it's not a it's not a huge 50 gigaton, gigaton methane burp but uh, the trends are just well they're unescapable if you want to look right 
So that's and, and the problem is we never go back down lower than or back down to the lowest of where it was the year before. We always start up higher than where yeah, we yeah. started the year before. And then well, we go higher and higher in the graph. You can see so we're in no man's land. You know, yeah, yeah. we're we're in territory we've never been in before, ever. Yeah, yeah. In human recorded history, not ever. So we don't know what to expect. No. So I think we've basically reached our conclusion, haven't we? Really? I mean, you know, it's uh, you know the the melt season seems to have ended, but the the refreeze, you know, except for sort of superficial uh, layers, you know, that are associated with lower um, uh, air temperatures, um, you know, there's no there's no refreeze, and basically the the reason uh, for that is, um, you know, that we've got this Atlantification, we've got high wave action, and then we've got warm water, you know, under the ice. So yeah, it's is, is that a fair enough, you know, summary? I think it's going to be struggling, and I think they might have been premature to, to go ahead and say they'd reached the minimum, but you know, they count every little crumb and every little, little yeah. film of ice that, you know, you could just run your finger through it. They yeah. count that as extent. Well, the big thing that really showed that to me so clearly is not not our observation, you know, from, from the satellite pictures, but it was those pictures that came back from Mosaic when they actually oh, reached yeah. the North Pole. I mean, that just, when you... That was when, stunning. You know, when you, you know, when you see that, there have been a couple of um, videos that have come out. I think Reuters did one. It, it just, it just showed, well, it, it showed the Atlantification because it just looked like a normal sea with waves and everything. And, right. And, and, and of course, there was not very little or no ice. Anyway, it don't look too good. So I think no, uh, Marco, I think I'll, it's going to be struggling. I'll leave it. I'll leave our presentation there. So that's Margo and uh, Seymour Rocks from Down Under. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Robin. <laughs>